Welcome to this week's episode of Where Are They Now? Featuring my very first imports ever from Indonesia. Thinking back now, importing plants is already stressful enough. Importing plants from Indonesia is stressful enough. Importing plants from the fir- for the first time from Indonesia? Why didn't someone tell me, Lauren, don't do that. Don't import plants for the first time from Indonesia. Girl, when I went going to grab the plants for this video, say, okay, let me grab this plant. I went to grab the plant, say, that's a replacement. I went to grab the other plant, say, that's not the original plant. Like, I don't... <laughs> I don't have half the plants anymore, so we're gonna start with those. My very favorite one, the Majestic, as you know, if you don't know, that was my, like, oh my God, I really, really love that plant so much so that it died immediately and I bought another one immediately. And so, yeah, it went very downhill. It was just super dehydrated as most um, imports come. And I was still learning, you know, about the roots, what like viable roots look like and learning that most likely the roots weren't gonna do anything. I wasn't sure. So I was crazy back then and I potted them up into pond like the next day. (laughs) So yeah, I lost that plant. (laughs) I lost that plant like very quickly. And so I bought another one very quickly. So yeah, that was the Philodendron Majestic. Hopefully I will have put on the screen some whatever evidence I have left <laughs> that I own that plant besides the actual unboxing. And then the other one that died very quickly after that was the Splendid. Actually, I might have some nodes of a Splendid left. Let me think for a second. The split that I'm looking at is the one that Dave gave me, but I have, I might have some nodes left, but there's still nodes because I, yeah, okay. If I have it, I'll throw it on the screen because I actually don't feel like getting up to like look. And I feel like even if I look at it, I'm not gonna be able to tell quickly enough um, because I went to a, I went to a swap, a plant swap, and I brought like nodes or baby cuttings of Splendid. So it was reduced to nodes very quickly. And upon being reduced to nodes, I never tried to repot it because I had the new Splendid so I wasn't checking for it. And it stayed in the prop box. And if you know anything about leaving plants in prop boxes, eventually the leaves melt away. Um, But whatever I did have remaining, which was decent, I traded for something else. So I no longer have the original Splendid anymore, but I didn't kill it but it was very much reduced to nodes. So that was the first two. After that, I think I have the rest of the plants from then. Yeah. Dang, let me think for a second before I miss a plant. I forgot one. (laughs) The other one that, is that that one or is that the other one? The other plant was a Melanochrysum, and I have a Melanochrysum. Is it the Melanochrysum though is the question. Actually, I think it's the original Melanochrysum because yes it is. Let me get it. I remember now that this is the original Melanochrysum that I imported because I killed the other one that I bought. So yeah, I do have the original <laughs> Looking crazy. This is the original Melanochrysum that I imported and as you may or may not know, Melanochrysums are very hard to mature and I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea. I originally had this on some sort of moss pole because there was, there's moss on these aerial roots and for whatever reason I thought that it would be okay switching it to a cocoa chip pole. No, not okay. I think I just didn't want to deal oh no okay it wasn't in it was i'm trying to think why did i think that was a good idea at the time i think i just wanted it to continue to grow and i didn't care if these dried up because i just wanted i didn't want it to stay in moss because you see there's still moss on it anyways the point is that this is all i got (laughs) this is all i got of the milano chrysum um There's two plants in here, looks like. Oh, that's good. There's two plants in here. Okay, I need to pay more attention to this. There's two plants. I must have chopped it at some time. I think I chopped it pretty early on as well. 
because it was long and lanky and I didn't like it. So I chopped it early on. I wanna say there might've been a third cutting that is long gone, but there's we still have two plants. Does it look good? I didn't say it looked good. I just said it existed, okay? <laughs> we have two plants left here. So honestly, I think all it needs is a little more light. It's, in the, it's on the back of my shelf for, for my climbing plants. And it probably just needs a little more light because ain't no signs of new growth in here. Not even a growth point. Because I'm not interested. I'm not interested because I see everyone's like massive struggle with maturing these plants. And I have other climbing plants that I really like. Like my Gloria, which you can see next to me. So, yeah. That's what's happening with that Milano Chrysler. I, I really should do something though because it's taking up a pole and a pot. So if I don't want it. I need to figure something out so I can free up that pole in that pot. Anywho, next is my Glorious, which is in like four pieces. This one was doing strong from the moment it was unboxed. The moment it was unboxed, it was still bouncy and it never skipped a beat. Like, I don't know what it is, but so I potted it up like a day or two later into this very same pot. This is the original pot that I potted it into with the original pond and it's still here. It's only these two leaves because I chopped it so many times into all of these pieces here. I did give like two, maybe four, at least four cuttings I traded with. So it had other cuttings that like it, it was flourishing. My goal was to um, repot this all together onto a nice moss pole so that I can just get even more and more beautiful. Um, but we just haven't weeded and progressed to the next step yet because, you know, a thing called life. But now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I'll take that pole for this because this really needs a pole. There is two pieces here. This, I believe, was the top cut that I chopped off. And it has a ton of roots there. It has another new leaf coming out. It gives off a lot of EFNs, if you can see. All of these dots here are um, EFN burns from the back of the plant, which you should be able to see. All of those crystally dots there on the back. Hopefully you can see, hopefully my face is blocked. And they just kind of burn through to the front of the leaf and that's what happens. Ah, it doesn't bother me much. I still think it's a beautiful plant. Like how, look how dark and beautiful these leaves are and it has this red margin do you see that the red margin on these dark dark green leaves like oh the EFN is sticky it's so beautiful so so beautiful oh, I I love this plant I really really love this plant so I'm happy that it survived this was I believe a mid cut yeah because there's the bottom this was a mid cut it's wonky because I never did anything with it it continued to grow but I just never put it on a pole, which I need to just do at this point. Seriously, what was I waiting for? I think I was just waiting for these to root so that I can pot it all together. It rooted a long time ago. I could have been potted it together, but I'm going to make that my goal. I'm going to, I'm working on a video. Well, in my mind, in my mind, I'm working on a video <laughs> of like all the things I've needed to do with my plants that I've just never done yet. Like all the things I've been putting off that I really need to do. This is definitely gonna go on that list of repotting this together. I have to get a nice sizable pot so I can put a nice pole in it. And this thing, I really want, I, I gotta do that because I want this to be on the pole and starting to flourish before summer, you know, so that it can just take all summer to do its thing thing. So, oh, there's another piece here. <coughs> Excuse me. There's another. Is this a glorious too? It is. Well, I'm just checking. So I have four pieces of glorious. This one has two nodes on it. It's rooted. This is also must be a mid cut. Yeah, it's doing good. Oh, another growth plant's activated down here. This is a vigorous, vigorous plant. I love it, highly recommend it. If you don't have it, you are missing out. You are, I'm not, it's not a fear. You are actually missing out if you don't have this plant. Get you a glorious, cause it just grows like a dream and it's beautiful. So it has now become four plants. The next plant is my Veracosum. And honestly, 
I don't know how this plant is still alive. Like, I really don't understand how this plant is still alive. Grant said we are reduced to one plant. There's mold in there. Gosh darn it. All right, we gotta clean that out. But yeah, this originally, when I imported it, I never liked it. I even actually said something to um, Green Spaces ID because the plant that they sent me compared to all the other plants, it looked janky like this when I got it. These aren't the original leaves, but this is basically how it looked with maybe two more leaves. And so I just assumed that it would just die. Everything that everyone says about varicosa and how, okay, I thought I had spider mites, and how like weak they are or how finicky or how quick they are to give up, not true. It's not true. This plant is a fighter because this plant should have been died a long time ago and it's still alive and yeah. It was originally one long plant. I chopped it into maybe three, lost one of them pretty quickly and held on to two for a while. But in the pot that it was in before this, I filled the water too high and I lost one of the plants. So we're down to one plant. Yeah. It's on a hopeful situation besides the mold it's on a hopeful situation it probably needs more light that's the problem i'm having with a lot of my plants right now which is why even though i would love to take on more plants and there's still more plants that i would want i don't have enough um, spots that have sufficient light for plants to really glow up so like the space i i could i could install a light there and it would actually look really nice i'll put up a clip of this corner here and what do you guys think? Now that I'm thinking about it, I think I could install a nice hanging pendant light over it. I never really felt like doing stuff like that because I don't wanna like put more holes in the wall and stuff, but I think I can do it with a command strip and just plug it in from the outlet that's there. And all those plants on that shelf would be doing better. They, you know what? They usually do pretty well because in the summertime, this window gives off so much light, the plants, they get distressed, like because they, they burn, they could like, they dry out so quickly, it's a lot. So it being in that spot initially was perfect because it wasn't direct, it was set back, it got some shade, but it still got sufficient light. So right now, through the winter though, it's not quite enough and so the plants are showing. It's showing that it's not quite enough, but the varicosum is still here. So that's something, that's really something. Then I placed another order very shortly after that of a fuzzy petio and this gigantium. The fuzzy petio, we tried to revive it. It was a dud. This gigantium, oh, somebody's calling me. at and I don't even have at and Okay. Anyways, you better not have stopped my recording. Let me check. This gigantium is not in its prime. <laughs> it looked better than this at one time, and it taught me a lesson. It taught me how to read plants. Like, sometimes it is really hard to really, like, pick out what exactly is wrong with the plant. And this is a prime example. This plant was flourishing. When I say when it started finally coming back, it took a long time to acclimate. It did take a long time to acclimate. It took all winter and spring until finally summer hit and it started growing and it was doing fine once it started growing. I had it in chunky perlite. I probably had it in there way too long. Finally potted it up into um, LECA. <coughs> I was like, okay, it should be fine. Chucky perlite to LECA, semi-hydro to semi-hydro is the same thing. It's not going to have any issues. So I wasn't worried about any transition period or anything like that. But it started declining very rapidly. Like leaves were turning yellow one after another. I remember posting it on Instagram. I was like, guys, like I don't know what the heck is going on with this plant. It's making me sad because it's really one of my favorite plants. And I had it right under my grow light where I had had it before. However... I changed the light bulb and it didn't dawn on me immediately that that's what it was because I still had it directly under the light. So in my mind, I'm thinking it's in the same spot right under the light bulb. I know it's not like as strong, but it made a difference. Okay. That light, and I'm going to, I have a whole light video planned. The only reason I haven't put it out yet is because I'm waiting on a um, order to come in of another light, but I, I already have like it planned in my mind. But the point is that, um, so you guys are nice because you guys are like, oh, try this, try that. And it's like, this is, 
uh, how can I say this? I appreciate feedback. I do because sometimes you guys think of things that I don't think of. However, whenever we get feedback or advice for somebody, we have to still use our own mind and think of our own, you know, plan and circumstances as to what it really might be. Because some people said, oh, pull it away from the light. Some people said, what are they saying? Um, I think a couple people said actually pull it, pull it away from the light. I don't think anyone said anything else. Oh, maybe somebody said put it in a um, humidity box or something like that. I don't remember what people were saying, but the main thing that stuck out to me was when people were saying pull it away from the light. And that was the exact opposite. That was like the exact opposite of what it needed. But I get it. Like you guys don't know. They didn't know the background that I changed the light bulb. You know what I mean? So that I had to finally remember like, Laura, you changed the light bulb. Like that's what it is. And I didn't change it by choice. The light bulb started to make my um, lamp short. The light bulb was too strong for my um, lamp. And so it started to short. So I didn't have a choice but to put whatever I had in there. And turns out that I knew that light bulb was weaker, but I didn't know it was that weak, that it was not enough to, su to um, support this plant. So I had to put it on the shelf under this other light that I have over here. And that light is pretty strong. If I, if you're not able to like measure by like foot candles or um, lumens, how bright your light is, put a Hoya under there and the Hoya will tell you how strong the light is. The light, that light sun stresses my Hoya. So I know it's a decently strong light. And so when I put it under there, it bounced back immediately. The leaves immediately stopped dying. Like, cause they were, I felt like I was watching them yellow before my eyes because it was happening so fast. It immediately froze and it stopped dying. I said, okay, something is working. And then it started growing again. It wasn't, it wasn't getting enough light. Like, so, so I say all that to say, I appreciate you guys advice. Don't stop giving me advice. However, if you get advice from other people, please still use your own mind and your own common sense to determine whether that advice really is good for you or not. Because if I had pulled it away from the light, it would have for sure died for sure. Like it would have been gone. And I'm happy I still have it because I love this plant. Like I really, really love this plant. It could be bigger right now. I lost probably in that time frame. I really think it was only over maybe the course of one week. I lost like four or five leaves. Like I lost half the plant. I only just got this leaf. So I lost half the plant and it was a full, you know, a nice full plant. So yeah, but it's back on up and up. And it's doing better and it needs water, it's dry, but it's, it's, it's fine overall. But this is my favorite leaf right now. My actual favorite leaf has unfortunately passed away, but it's okay. It gives beautiful, beautiful leaves. I love this plant. I love it because the variegation is stable. The leaves are large and paddly, like a girl loves, and it doesn't need a pole. Yes. So I think that's it. Let me check. I hope I'm not missing any plants from that import order. If I am, I will insert a picture, a clip, or something. If for some reason I'm forgetting something, but I don't really think that I am. So that is all for this episode of Where Are They Now? If you like these type of update videos, here's another one for you to watch here.